Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Pre-Gaming. Today I'm taking a look at Earthworm Jim. I want to do a series of videos of games uh, that are kind of from my childhood that I really loved, that I kind of hate now. Uh, this is a great example of a game that I think everybody really, really fondly remembers from that 16-bit era, but is actually, uh, it really doesn't hold up. Um, this was 1994, so you gotta think about that time period, early 90s, uh, everything's edgy, everything's Mountain Dew, everything's snowboarding, skateboarding, rap. Uh, Marky Mark, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Earthworm Jim is kind of a relic of the 1990s. And I loved this game when I was a kid, but I've been playing it for a little bit now, uh, ahead of this video, and I realized that this game is fucking impossible. This is a difficult game, and it has been re-released a few times. I played it last time when it first came out for the Game Boy Advance. It was a launch title for the Game Boy Advance. And... I couldn't really get myself to play it that much then either, but we're gonna see how far I can get on three lives or until I just get sick of it. Um, this game kind of has a fun little bit of a history to it. Um, if you remember the early 90s, we're all about Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, I would say more than, you know, well, maybe at, on par with like the Transformers and He-Man era. The early 90s were Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and all that crap. And so, uh, toy makers, in this case Playmate, were super, super interested in getting hold of an IP that they can make toys on that they owned or partially owned entirely. So they approached a small company called Shiny. And Shiny was a kind of Frankenstein monster of different studios, uh, including guys who worked on the Command & Conquer series and uh, Cool Spot, another, um, but in my opinion, infinitely better 16-bit era platform. Um, so they approached him with this game, and that studio, having finally been freed of having to work with licensed IPs like Coolspot, decided to make the weirdest game they could possibly come up with. It's it's very British, I would say, in its humor. Uh, very surreal. Uh, but more than anything, this is a freaking difficult game. Now, when I was younger, I could play through this game once a day, easily, finish the entire game, beat it, no cheats, anything like that. Today, I'm gonna be stoked if I can make it past the first level. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog. Some of these things are kind of burned into my mind, like I just remember so well where some secrets are, but... Uh, unlike Sonic, I would say that this was a game that I realized when I was a kid that I wasn't having a ton of fun playing it, and I wanted to switch. Like, like, that's a great example. You climb up the cliff, and the dog's gonna bite you no matter how fast you are to shoot it. That's... bullshit. And the dogs kill your health so fast. Crap. Alright, now this I remember. Uh, Earthworm Jim has basically two attacks. He's got a cool gun uh, that I always love that it it only fires in eight directions, it doesn't really show you where the bullets are going, and the bullets kind of auto-track to what the nearest target is. Uh, his other attack is himself, his whip. This is kind of unwieldy to use, but um, it looks cool. And also doesn't waste any ammo. I think one of the reasons that people look so fondly back at this game is the animations were really good at the time. Uh, it looks like a Saturday morning cartoon come to life, and... Like I mentioned, um, the whole interest in this game was to kind of build out a, a new IP for toy licensing and all that stuff, so i get this one up. I'm gonna need that, I bet. Uh, so Earthworm Jim, I wouldn't say went on to be as big as like Ninja Turtles or anything like that, but he got his fair share of uh, merchandise in the early 90s. He even got a TV show for uh, 95 to 96, so just two seasons of it. Um, TV show is, is actually better than the video game, I would say. Oh my god, this is gonna drive me nuts. I thought I remembered how to do this. Okay, well that's not how you do it, you don't die. Um, interesting thing about the TV show though, because I was doing a little bit of research uh, on the show, because I vaguely remember it in my head. Um, but one thing that I found was interesting is the voice of Jim in the TV show is, uh, is Homer Simpson himself, Dan Costanero. Costanero? Costanello? Um, yeah, he voiced Jim in the original series, and it was on WB, I just remember watching it to get to the tick, basically. Holy crap, this guy is kicking my ass. Why does everything hit me for, like, so much damage? Alright, we need some strategy. Yeah! Take that. Very cool, indeed. So, 
Part Gem was pretty successful. Um, got a couple of sequels, some more fondly remembered than others. Uh, Earthworm Gem 2 was a 16-bit sequel, and it released uh, basically the following Christmas. And it's very much more the same as this, but a lot of kind of different variety and levels. Like they have ones where you um, do like kind of an isometric shooter style game. Um, ones where you're like trying to protect a puppy or something like that. Oh, I remember what you're supposed to do here. You're supposed to hit this crate into the... There we go. Ugh. I I'm gonna die at least once before I kill this guy. Why is this so hard? Uh, Earthworm Jim 2, I think, is most remembered by the fact that it's also even more impossible to play. Um, I don't think people, I would say, remember Farm Jim 2 as fondly as they do Earthworm Jim 1. Uh, but it was fine. It, was, it is what it is. Uh, the worst, though, was Earthworm Jim 3D, which came out in 1997 for N64 and PC. Uh, that game was just terrible. Uh, it looks like Baby's First Unity Project. It, it's... Ah, oh, I was so close to beating him. I need to not talk why I play this. Uh, Earthworm Jim 3D was like a rushed project. It, it looks like it was made in like three months. Um, and he had, at that point, Earthworm Jim had a fairly spotless reputation. Uh, and Earthworm Jim 3D, I would say, pretty much sunk the franchise. A uh, little, I guess, remembered fact though is that Earthworm Jim, he had multiple appearances in the good old winter of 1997. He also appeared in Clay Fighter 63 and a third. Uh, Clay Fighters being a 16 bit kind of parody fighting game uh, that eventually came over to the N64. And, uh, that game is not great either, but I would say that it's serviceable. It it's, can be fun if you're in the right mood for it, but it definitely doesn't hold up to, say, like, the Killer Instincts era. Killer Instincts are a game that I can play today and have fun. Oh, man. We're gonna do this. Bam! Bam! So, storyline-wise, it's pretty nonsensical. Um, Earthworm Jim was an earthworm. A super suit Ruby. landed on Earth, and he crawled inside it and became Ruby. a superhero. Ruby. 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 I can hit buttons to make him say groovy. Um, he's being a chased by Psy Crow. He's like a the crow equivalent. This is the first minigame that you have to play in between every single level. And I think I remember this, that if you don't get uh, enough blue orbs, you have to fight Psycro. He's really super hard. Oh man, this isn't that bad. This reminds me of the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 mini level. Except more hard to control. What did the blue orbs do? Because I think you just have to race Psycro. I don't think you actually have to collect orbs. I love the weird sound effects, too. Um, the banjo playing. <laughs> oh boy, this is hard. I think I beat Psycho, though. Uh, so Jim decides he needs to say Princess What's-Her-Name, or What's-Her-Butt, or whatever the princess's name in this game is. Uh, there's no real logic or anything like that. He just kind of travels from level to level, doing funny animations. Uh, again, it was the 90s. We had a lot more patience for that kind of thing. Uh, I heard to continue. Awesome. So I'm going to play through... The level 2 is kind of widely known as the best level. It's, uh... Uh, it's hell, basically, and it's owned and overseen by, like, a cat. Evil the Cat, I think his name. Um, and it's populated by lawyers who, like, use paper to attack you and stuff like that. The music's incredible. You can see the cat off in the background it's dancing. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, his attack is he throws kittens at you, which is pretty really dark. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna have the patience to get all the way through this level, to be honest. But we'll 
see how far I get. Ow! Yippee! Yeah, it's just very bizarre. It has like this kind of elevator music. Yippee! And then you hear like people being tortured in the background. Yippee! If it looks like I'm just taking damage and I have no clue why, that's because I have no clue why I'm taking damage. Ooh, I remember this thing. Ugh, this is a hard one to pull off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, instant death pits are the worst. Right back to the beginning of the level. Because you didn't memorize that you're supposed to jump there in your previous 10 playthroughs, I guess. Man, 16 bit games were not. So yeah, Earthworm Jim, not really a franchise that exists anymore, unfortunately. Earthworm Jim 3D, I believe, was like the last kind of incarnation of uh, Earthworm Jim. Alright, I know that seeing them just to jump over is coming up here quickly. Alright, yeah, yeah, there we go. Probably gonna, just gonna find another pit like that in a second. Oh, I remember the crystals. The crystals you have to run against. Yippee! I remember it's super hard to spot the hooks that you use to, to jump from. Now, I'm not saying all 16-bit platforming games are terrible, but the bad ones are really bad. Uh, Earthworm Gem, I would say it's kind of middle ground, but it's not the game that you want to play today. It's very janky, the controls are are very hard to, to use. Um, but there's also some really great games of that era. One of my personal favorites, uh, the Aladdin game. The, uh, just turn around and hit the stupid thing. What is going on? Uh, the Aladdin game for Sega Genesis was really great. See, like, this is a great example. Like, shoot it. Uh, <laughs> Another game, probably another game I'll do in this series of terrible games I liked when I was a kid. Was, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Bubsy the Bob. God damn it! Really? Bubsy the Bobcat. Another kind of 16-bit mascot era that people, uh, mascot character people like to shit on. All right, if I can't get over this, this is the end of this video. This... Thank you. All right. There we go. The, the first lawyer. Uh, can we fight a boss right here? Oh, yes, no, yeah, no minute. This guy, you can just blast. Uh, I remember you can whip him. And whipping, I think, is always the easiest way to, to beat him. Like, one hit and die. There's Evil Cat. how to get those items up above the rope. Dear, I'm going to that. What are who speedruns this game? I'm going to watch speedruns of this after I'm done with this. I want to see people beat this, like, expert level. Ow! 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 
Yippee! I'm in bad shape. I think I'm two hits away from death. So. Ah. At least there's no time limit. That's another thing from this era that I really hate. If there's a time limit in this game. need to whip and then circle back around. I need to whip and circle back around. Oh my god. Why? Okay, whip. No! Also maybe it doesn't help that I'm playing this on the Xbox controller. Yeah, it's definitely not what you're supposed to do. There- ah, oh, it's right there. Why? Why is this so hard? I can't believe how much I played this game when I was a kid. Jeez. I really just want to get to the second boss, because I know the second boss is really cool. No! <laughs> Oh my god, okay. I drink some beer. We're gonna do this. We got this. This time. We got this. Yes! Yes, take that! Do not fall from these platforms, Earthworm Jim. One health left. I do not want to have to do that part again. Come on. Oh. Oh, thank God. Jesus. Alright, and yes, cat. Oh. Maybe he doesn't throw his kids at you. You're, just, you're out of your costume for some reason. I remember this part is not so bad. You just kind of jump over his fireballs. Eventually he launches something, I think, that bounces. He cleans himself, that's cute. I only have one point of health left, so... One hit and I'm dead. So that seems super challenging, though. I think I'll be okay. I think there's a later level, too, where you're out of your costume. That's really hard. That's a normal earthworm size. It's like the same length as his super costume. This is, uh, I remember you have to shoot your gun at the direction he's coming and then ju jump over the fireballs. Alright, this, uh, this boss wasn't as much fun as I thought it was. But we're gonna beat him and then we'll call it. Crazy is I have a lot easier time with the boss fights than anything else. I say as he just gets me twice in a row. I'm gonna guess he has nine lives because he's a cat. So I better not screw this up or else it's game over for me. Can I just hold this now? I have limited ammo, I guess. Alright, two more hits and he should be dead, I hope, right? Yes! Take that, Evil the Cat. Alright, guys. That wraps it up for my first retro video. Uh, I'm going to check out a couple of more terrible games from the 90s. Uh, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Please follow, subscribe, whatever it is that YouTube does. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.